The first thing that we know of his life after his birth is the fact that his mother gave him to be raised in the desert. In fact, this was a custom of the elite of the Quraysh. Now you all know the story of Halima. We're just going to summarize it briefly. Halima bint Sa'diya, the famous foster mother of the Prophet ﷺ, she narrates this story in the first person. And it is recorded in a number of books of hadith and of seerah. And so inshallah, it is an authentic hadith, no doubt about that, that she said that she and her husband were suffering greatly from poverty. So she's explaining why would she want to take another baby? Because that baby gets money, the, the parents give money. And so I convinced my husband to go with the yearly, there was a yearly time that the women of Banu Sa'id ibn Bakr would go to Mecca and would obtain any newly born child who would be willing to be adopted, or not adopted, but foster fed for two, three years. And so she goes with the group, probably five, ten women from her clan, and they enter into Mecca and they find out who has given birth. And they hear of the newest batch that has come forth in the last five or six or seven months. One of them, of course, is the child that was called the orphan child. They were told immediately there's an orphan child. His father's already dead. Some of the women didn't even go visit the house of Amina because the only reason you'd adopt the child is because you want money. And when the child is an orphan, then it's known that you're not going to get that much money. After all, I mean, where is he going to get money from? So some women didn't even go to the house of Amina. Others went and when they saw how poor and the poverty, they didn't like the taking child who was an orphan. Halima as well visited and she tried to move on to find another child because she wanted the money. When the week finished, every one of her friends had acquired one of these newborn children except for Halima. And the only child remaining was the Prophet Muhammad wasallam. So she told her husband that I feel embarrassed. It's like a bit shameful that all of my friends are going back now to the desert and they have a child and I don't have any. It seems like it's, I'm lost. I mean, it's not fair, meaning I want to be like them. So her husband said, why don't you take the orphan child? Perhaps Allah will bless us through him. And so they agreed to take care of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, all the narrations say that as soon as they took the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the miracles began right then and there, that she only had one old goat that had stopped giving milk for a long time. As soon as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam entered into the tent, the goat's udders became full. She had an old mount that they were riding the both of them. And when they put the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam along with the family on this ride, on this animal, it became the fastest animal. Generally speaking, this foster care usually lasted two years. During these two years, the blessings that Halima witnessed in her household were so many that she was scared of losing the Prophet ﷺ. And so she invented a million and one excuses in front of Amina. And she kept on persisting, persisting, persisting until Amina felt that there was so much care and love that the Prophet ﷺ is in good hands. And so she agreed to extend this contract for a longer period. Of course, it was during the second phase of this foster care that the famous incident of Shaq al-Sadr, of opening up of the heart occurred. When the Prophet was four years old, Anas ibn Malik narrates, the hadith is in Sahih Muslim, so there's an authentic hadith, no question about it, that Jibreel came to the Prophet when he was playing with the other children. When Jibreel came, the other children ran away, they're scared. The Prophet stood his ground. As a four-year-old kid, he's displaying bravery. He stood his ground. What do you want from me? And Jibreel came and overpowered him. Sara'ahu. This means that he was struggling. Four-year-old kid is fighting an angel, the strongest angel Allah has created, but he's not going to go without a fight. Again, this shows the determination of the Prophet Muhammad So Jibreel forced him on the ground. You can't fight Jibreel. He forced him on the ground and he opened up his chest. Shaqqa sadrahu. Just two words. And he took his heart out. And he took out a black slither, a black portion from the heart. And he threw it away. And he said, minka. This is shaitan's portion that he had in you. He took it out. And then he washed the heart in a golden cup of zamzam. And then he put it back. So he washed the heart and he put it back and he sealed it up. So when the children, the foster brother and Shayma, 
who he was playing with, when the children ran away, they ran back and they said, and they're looking in the distance that there's a man throwing him on the floor, putting blood in and this and that. So they come screaming and running that our brother has died, our brother has been killed, a man has abducted him, a man has killed him. And of course, Halima and others, they became so worried. They come running outside and they found the Prophet ﷺ sitting, his face is pale. SubhanAllah, not wailing, not screaming, not crying. He's the brave for you. He was the bravest for you all the world has ever seen. And when they saw him, they saw those lines on his chest. And Anas ibn Malik says, I could see the traces of that line on his chest. Anas is narrating this hadith when the Prophet ﷺ is around 60 years old. This incident was what concerned Halima. And she decided before anything else happens, let me quietly return the Prophet ﷺ to Amina. So shortly after the Prophet ﷺ was returned to Amina, we only have one incident that is recorded during this time. Amina decided to take her son to Yathrib. And she had with her the one servant that it is said that Abdul Muttalib gifted them when they got married. And this is Ummi Ayman. Abdul Muttalib gifted his son when they got married, Ummi Ayman. So Amina traveled to uh, Yathrib, which is now called Medina, along with Ummi Ayman. And the little boy, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi stayed there for a few months on the way back in a small little settlement, which is still present to this day, and it is called Al Abwa. Amina herself fell ill and she passed away right then and there. And Umm Ayman had her buried by the people of the village Abwa. And so to this day, her grave is at a place called Abwa. And then when the Prophet is barely six years old, he loses his mother and his father. So he is then entrusted to Abdul Muttalib, the chieftain of the Quraysh. In one occasion, the uncles of the Prophet sent the Prophet to find some lost camels. Ibn Sa'id mentions the reason why his uncles chose a little kid, who was probably seven, eight years old, to go find the camels was because, listen to this, he never did anything except that it was successful. So now the uncles are getting desperate. Camels are expensive creatures. The uncles are getting desperate and they can't find the camels. So they decide, well, this boy, whatever he does, it works. Let's go send him out alone in the desert to find the camels. And when they sent the Prophet Wasallam, he was delayed in coming back. And Abdul Muttalib, when he found out, he was furious at them. How could you have done this? Why did you send the boy? Now, of course, they sent him because they want the camels back, right? Abdul Muttalib was furious and he was pacing and walking around waiting for the Prophet to come. And as soon as he came, he hugged him and he said, from now on, I will never let you out of my sight. As we all know, at the age of eight, once again, for the third time, our Prophet became an orphan. First his father, then his mother, and now his grandfather. And one of the things that Abdul Muttalib did on his deathbed is that he entrusted the Prophet ﷺ to his son Abu Talib. And so Abu Talib takes charge of the Prophet ﷺ. And Abu Talib lives a long life. And Abu Talib passes away when the Prophet ﷺ is over 50 years old. So he remains with the Prophet ﷺ.